And I see no evidence to explain to me why this particular uh, flu epidemic is particularly virulent. Something's wrong, and we're not being told something about it. My instinct, if I were being paid to research this by a governmental agency or a private agency, would be to start by looking at the flu vaccine. That would be the first thing I'd look at. What Something is wrong with this picture. I think that there's been a mutation somewhere along the way. I don't think it's H1N13 necessarily. I think that there's a multiplicity of factors that are, that are not being described, especially we see the cytokine overreaction in the young, healthy people. Something is wrong with the whole balance, and I don't know what it is. I don't. Let's see what you have to say. James on KSFO Line 6, what's your theory on the flu? Why is it so uh, virulent? Uh, okay, let me give the background. I worked in a special secret lab for uh, viruses for warfare in a special place somewhere in the United States. And uh, when we were testing the flu viruses on various mammals, we found that the damn thing didn't work in it anyway. <clears throat> we wrote well, well, you mean, wait, when you said the flu vaccine didn't work. Right. It was useless. So we didn't have to take it because I was part of DOD. So we protested the mandate for every military personnel to take the flu vaccine. We oh. did everything. And you know what? It was turned down. And That's so, right. Because think of how many millions of, of shots. That, that, think about how many millions of shots the DOD was selling for the drug companies. And if the, if the drug company gets five, six dollars a shot and you're talking about millions of people Hey, they got a guaranteed income. Three That's right. Sh yeah, right. Shoot up the soldiers with that. Shoot them up with uh, antidepressants. Yeah, you got some army now. So I, I know you can't say. Was it Fort Detrick, or you can't say? And I can't say. I cannot say. Uh, that would be uh, put me in a bad situation. <laughs> I assume. I assume you're an older gentleman these days. Oh yes, yes, yes. I'm. The, you talked to me before. I'm a black guy that voted for Trump. Family of sixteen. Doctor. Oh, shh. Whoa, don't say that. A black research scientist who voted for Trump? Don't tell that to Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> well, I would like to use her for some of those experiments. <laughs> well, I'm, no, no, we don't go there. We don't do that on, <laughs> no. on this show. So, look, hey, look, old guy, old guy James, let me ask you something. You know so much more about this than most of us do. Did you take the flu shot this year? No, I've never taken the flu shot since I realized what was going on. Well, I've never taken one in my entire life. I actually have an intact immune system. So uh, this is the other thing about it. People think these flu uh, vaccines, all these vaccines they're taking, they think they're going to bump up the immune system. They do not. That's another lie. Well, I'm going to I'm going to say something that you may have not. You're are you a virologist by training, a microbiologist or what? No, I'm a space system engineer by professional training. That's what I went in. OK, but you can certainly read the literature and you know what was being done by the virologists. So do you do you agree with me that the flu vaccine does not only not stimulate the immune system, it actually knocks down the immune system? Amen. That's true. That is true. Now, if you look at the population of your young people in America, we don't use vitamin C. I mean, I use 4,000 uh, milligrams a day. You don't use vitamin C. You don't do things to build the immune system. But well, what the hell happens when you give a shot to someone and knock it down even lower? They're yes, exactly. You're opening them up to, to infections of a variety of kinds. So, I mean, my, per my personal regimen is a few grams of vitamin C. First of all, it's every day. It's been over a gram, every, well, five, about a gram a day when I'm healthy, much higher when I'm sick. Well, when I feel under the weather, but I have found, I have found that vitamin A is almost a magic bullet. In the last five years, I started adding, you ready for the amount? Over a hundred thousand units of vitamin A a day during seasons when I feel run down. Now, I know that vitamin A is uh, lipid soluble. I understand the risks of vitamin A in high dosages for long periods of time. I know all of that. I know about the uh, Arctic explorers who died from eating polar bear liver, but they, they were taking on the order of two and a half million units of vitamin A from the polar bear liver. So I, I know the range is pretty safe within, oh, 100,000, maybe 150,000 units of A. But the big thing that people don't understand, my friend, is the variety of quality in the vitamin world. It ranges from... Uh, the broken garbage cars that you might buy made in some horrible third world nation all the way up to the uh, Rolls Royce or the Bentley. It, it's the same in vitamin manufacturing, am I right? That's right. You know the apple pocket there's a D and a D1. One is artificial and it's useless. 
So if you're inviting, say, a D1 apple taco ferro, you're, you're wasting, you're pissing down a drain. It's worthless. It's crap. <laughs> now I see, uh, you know you know your business, right? Mixed tocopherols are the key here. Most people say, well, I took the vitamin E, for example, and it did nothing. But they were taking a single isolate of tocopherol, not the mixed tocopherols from a very fine company. Or uh, the same thing with vitamin C. There is vitamin C out there that's totally useless. It's dead. A lot of these manufacturers are total shysters or should be in prison. The fact is that vitamin C varies all over the map, and the dosage is critical. I am very lucky because I, I for many years, knew the, ge the genius of all geniuses in this. Not only Dr. Linus Pauling, Jr., one of the great geniuses of all time, but a doctor I knew who died a few years ago, Dr. Robert F. Cathcart III. I don't know if you know the Cathcart Protocol. What a great guy. He developed the bowel tolerance theory uh, for another time. Well, I don't know. Look, all I can do is I love callers like this, and I thank you for calling. You worked in a, in a secret laboratory, and basically you're confirming what I believe, and it's not because we're just trying to whistle in the dark. Maybe we do know what we're talking about. Doctor, stay on the line. I'm going to send you God, faith, and reason, because reason will lead you to faith, and your faith will lead you to God. It's that simple.